300 pounds of fat woman with 120 pounds of thin man to start a journey to collect oxygen because there is no oxygen in this world. Matthew was just diving, but when he came ashore to get a breath of fresh air, he was like being choked by someone else when he could not breathe. He quickly put on the submersible. Luckily there was still extra oxygen in the tank. He did not know what was happening until he saw a deer suffocating in the distance. Only then did he realize that the oxygen in the air was gone. Matthew dragged the few bottles of oxygen left and started to run away. He found a car on the road again. The woman in the car was already dead. He didn't dare to stop. He had to find more oxygen before it ran out. Fortunately for him, he hadn't gone long before he saw a house and the door was not locked. He entered, and it was dark inside. He found the owner of the house in the kitchen. 300 pounds of Elizabeth with a little girl in her arms because they couldn't talk. Matthew used his hand to show Elizabeth not to be afraid. He showed that he wouldn't hurt her. But Elizabeth saw her baby. She finally shed a tear. She asked Matthew why she couldn't breathe in the air. Matthew gestures with his hands to show that he doesn't know. He told her to hold on. Matthew wants to help Elizabeth get out of here. But she couldn't bear to leave her baby behind. Matthew knew they would die if they stayed here any longer. Elizabeth finally chose to live. The two of them start to sort through the eight tanks of oxygen left. But Matthew was staring at Elizabeth's oxygen tube. He knew that a 300-pound fatty could consume twice as much oxygen as he did. Matthew had no choice. He had to follow Elizabeth to find oxygen first. But the whole world can't breathe. The two of them don't know where to go. It's a world without oxygen. Elizabeth drove away with Matthew and eight bottles of oxygen. The first thing they thought of in this situation was the supermarket rather than the hospital. Normally, hospitals are far away, and they didn't have enough oxygen to get them to the hospital. When they saw the victims outside the supermarket, they were lost in thought. They walked in and realized that even the cashier at the supermarket hadn't had time to save herself. Elizabeth saw the phone and called the police. But the sound of the phone rang through the entire supermarket. Their last hope was dashed. The two men did not find spare oxygen, so they had to go to a hillside and set off the distress alarm. At this point, they only had three bottles of oxygen left. Then Matthew thought that the distress alarm was short, so he pulled the smoke bomb in his hand. But it was as if the smoke had never existed. The whole world was terrifyingly silent. Little by little, time passed. It seemed that all efforts were in vain. The two of them clung to each other. Matthew looked at the note flying out of his hand. Can we really only wait like this? At this moment, Matthew's oxygen was about to be depleted. He looked at Elizabeth next to him. This is different from the way he first looked at Elizabeth. But then Elizabeth made a bold decision. She gave Matthew the only two bottles of oxygen she had left. At this moment Matthew did not immediately replace the oxygen. Matthew seemed to understand something in the choice between life and death. And the sky in the distance seemed to indicate the arrival of death. Just then, a miracle happened. Many fireworks rang out in the sky. The two men looked at each other and smiled. The fireworks were proof that someone was still alive. So they followed the direction of the fireworks with the only oxygen left. The fireworks were blossoming in the sky. Does it really mean that someone is still alive? It was six hours after the oxygen had disappeared. They had little oxygen left in their oxygen tanks. But then there were fireworks in the sky. This gave the two men hope again. They followed the direction of the fireworks and found an estate. There was still light inside the house. This proves that there must be someone inside the house. When they saw the fireworks that had just been released, they looked at each other. Then they realized. So what they saw was electronic fireworks. Because the open flame cannot be lit without oxygen. They could only hold the oxygen first and then open the door without permission. But instead, they saw a lavish party. In the background of music, two strangers came along. They seemed to realize that this might be the end of the line for them. Then they embraced each other. And Matthew's oxygen was running out again. He looked at Elizabeth with affection. Without consulting Elizabeth. He turned around and knelt down to replace the oxygen tank with a new one. At this time Elizabeth also found that her oxygen was about to run out. Elizabeth saw Matthew replacing the oxygen bottle. She panicked. She indicated that she was out of oxygen as well. Matthew said it had nothing to do with him. In this moment, the humanity is revealed. Elizabeth wants her oxygen tank back. 
but Matthew holds on to it and retreats. The only oxygen left brought out the true nature of both of them. Elizabeth pushed Matthew against the pillar in order to survive. This happened to knock over the decorations. The two then began to wrestle with each other. But what they didn't realize was, the oxygen tube had entangled them. Matthew fell to the ground. 300 pounds of Elizabeth was on top of him. At this point Matthew was in pain. Elizabeth realized that the ornament that had just fallen had pierced Matthew's body. She didn't know what to do, but she slowly removed Matthew's respirator. When she removed his mask, Elizabeth could see Matthew's face for the first time. She was devastated. She silently took off her own oxygen mask. At this moment, Elizabeth was finally relieved. Is it in the test of life and death that the essence of humanity can be reflected? Why would she do that? You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.